about six or seven years ago, one of my main income streams as an illustrator was taking on pet portrait commissions for people. And I thought it would be kind of fun today, since I'm trying to get back into using watercolours, to have a go at finishing a portrait. Hi, my name's Danny Williams. I'm a full-time illustrator specialising in pictures of animals. The paper I'm using today is Langton cold pressed watercolour paper, so that's the one that has the most texture to it. Um, and it's in a block, which means it's sort of gummed down on all four sides except for a tiny bit here that you can get a palette knife in and loosen the page when you've finished. And the great thing about that is you can throw loads of water at it and the paper won't, won't buckle when it's dried. I've already transferred the sketch to the paper and now I'm using my uh, Stettler pigment liner to just ink in some details before I add the paints. This is the 0.05 pen, so that's the absolute thinnest one that they make. Really tiny, fine lines that you get from it, especially on this textured paper. Now the most important part of the portrait is arguably the eyes. If you get the eyes wrong, the whole animal is going to look out. Um, but the eyes are often a good place to start, and I'll show you why. It gives you a feel for the pen that you're using. It just means that if you go in too heavy, you can sort of disguise that line more in the eye than you can in other areas, because the ink's often a little bit thicker, the line works a bit thicker and heavier around the eyes. So the way you use the pen on this textured paper really makes a difference. If I were to go very carefully and deliberately making precise lines, I get a much fatter, much heavier line weight than if I go at it with more sort of sketchy, scratchy lines. I don't want to say hesitant, they're not hesitant, they're deliberate in terms of where I'm placing them, but they're just much looser, much sketchier, I'm sort of going over the same spot again and again, whereas on the eye, where the line work can be a bit heavier, you can go slowly take your time and get that precise but heavier line weight. But with most of this image what I'm aiming for is that sort of feel of fine, fine dog hairs that have that sort of sketchy quality to them. If this were a white or very pale coloured dog I'd have to be especially careful with the lines because they would just show through more through the paint. Um, a darker dog, especially sort of black or chocolate brown dogs, you, they're a little bit more forgiving in terms of the lines. Um, the flip side is you do have to work a little bit harder to get the lines that you want to show up to, to show up through the paintwork. areas like this, these lines on the edge, they're gonna not have paint over the top of them, like they're the edge of the dog, they're just gonna be sort of coming out the edge almost, so do you need to be a little bit more careful to get those looking right, but when you're working on sort of an area like this, which will have paint all around it because it's on the inside of the painted area, you can be a little bit looser, a little bit more, well almost haphazard about where you're putting them. So some of these lines that I'm putting in are just kind of almost where the light would be hitting the dog and just showing up little details, little lines. It gives a sort of sense of form of the shape of its face. Some of them are very important, like this area here. That's, his, that's the area around the dog's cheek. So that would be a little bit more prominent. And here is where the hairs on his neck are kind of changing direction. He's got hairs here that are going this way and then hairs on the back of his neck that are coming down this way and if you look at a dog there's often a sort of distinct line around here where the, the two hairs kind of meet like that. And they've got their sort of scent glands and whiskery bits and things as well that would show up. Um, I can see I've just drawn in lines where those little whisker points would be 
because they do those dots that are around the muzzle they do follow regular lines so I'm not going to draw the whiskers in right now those kind of finer details will come right at the very end after the paintwork but I will put in suggestions of where they will be um, you'll notice I've left the mouth part till the end that's because I don't know why it's always the trickiest part it's like they have these folds of flesh around their gums and their lips and they're just however I draw it it always seems to be a bit not quite right like it's a bit hard to tell what exactly is going on one of the other things to think about when you're drawing a dog and putting in these li these lines for the hairs is what kind of hair has it got is it a wiry terrier type hair has it got long silky hair like a spaniel or something this dog's got quite short hair not not too coarse but that sort of short doggy hair yeah doggy hair it's got doggy hair um so i'm using small lines to convey that i think actually that should be a smoother line because that's part of this that's a skinny part flesh not hair so here these are the gums so they're not hairy so I need to use sort of more flowing straighter lines rather than the scratchy hair lines of before and this is what I mean about it. it's really hard to see what's going on so he's got he's got a fold of skin going down there that's like his outer lip but then he's got this kind of inner lip bit. I don't know what it's called it's got a name it's that bit with the sort of jaggedy edge to it and then he's got just a couple of teeth showing through now the teeth are obviously white or, or whitish so there's not going to be much paint on them which means that we have to get the line work quite precise any areas that are lighter in the picture if the if the pen work isn't right it's going to stand out and look bad Okay, he's almost there. What I'm just going to do is put a bit of texture in his nose. So this bit is in shadow. So I'm just going to hatch that in like that. And we'll darken that up with the paint work later. Um, but I also want to give him some of that texture that dogs have on their noses. If you look in sort of closely at a dog's nose, it's made up of... It's very bumpy, lots of little sort of circular bumps there. Now, I don't want to cover the whole nose in that. Um, because there's going to be areas that are lighter where the light's shining and areas that are in more shadow um, but I just want to give a little bit of a suggestion of texture there without going overboard we can darken it up around this bit here that's going to be darker this is where the light's going to be hitting it so we don't really want to put any there that doesn't look too good but Hopefully I'll sort it out when I paint it. Um, okay, so he's finished. And what I need to do now, once the um, ink is dried, is rub out the pencil lines from below. Okay, so now we're on to the painting part. Um, and this bit, I try to get the paint down quite quickly. I always work, or almost always work, wet on wet with the watercolours. And what I'm looking for is those areas where the paints kind of bleed and bloom and merge into one another and create a sort of very soft but highly textured watercolour finish. Um, so once I put the paint down I try and get it down quite quickly, or at least the, the body of it anyway. Now normally when I work on a pet portrait it's for a client and I'm working from a photograph that they've sent me. This sketch in my book was one that I did um, about, about well over a year ago and I didn't finish it and then I found it and thought you know what that would be a good picture to work on um, just to see if I can still paint and I can't find the reference photo for it so I don't actually know I can't even remember what it looks like I can't remember what kind of dog this is even to be honest um, it could be I thought at first it was a Vishla maybe um, or a pointer but I decided to make it a, a Labrador I thought it could look like a young Labrador that still had a sort of 
thinning, a thinnish face. Um, so this hair is coming off my brush. I'll try and get rid of those. Um, so that's what I'm going with, just because I wanted to use those kind of colours rather than the orangey colours of a Vishla. Okay, I've got a problem with my water. I'm wearing a really fuzzy jumper today in an attempt to keep warm. So I've got my wrist socks on as well. Um, but some of that fuzz had gone into my paint water and was sticking to my paintbrushes and everything. So I've just changed my water and hopefully that will be better. So what I'm laying down now is just a layer of water. I'm not thinking about colour or anything like that just getting the area I want to paint wet and the reason it's got that tint to it that you might be able to see is partly because I was using dirty water because I was lazy but also just because it does allow me to see where I've put the water to make sure that I've covered everything I want to cover and it just gives a nice sort of base to start with okay so that's really wet and now I'm just going to drop in the colours that I want to use and I'm not going to think too hard about it. So we'll start with these lighter colours, very similar to what was already down from the water anyway. And we'll drop in something around here, the dog would have more shadow like that. Now as I said, I, I couldn't find the reference photo that I drew this sketch from. I obviously did work from a photo, I can tell from the way the sketch looks, um, but I can't find it. So I decided to make him a yellow Labrador. Um, but I am using a picture just as a reference for the colour. It's just a picture of a Labrador that I googled. It doesn't look like the one in the drawing, but it will give me an idea of, of the sort of the colours that appear in their fur, because even though it's a yellow Labrador and it's blonde coloured it will have different colours within that there'll be areas that are more brown areas that are grey um, you know with any dog it's not ever one colour even a solid coloured dog where the light hits it and so on there'll be all different colours showing in there so what I'm trying to do is just gently push the paints around the painting so that they go where I need them in terms of like reaching the edge of the dog and so on but within that I also just want to let them do their thing that's really dark I need to add some more water and try and fix that there we go that's looking better it's a bit more orangey than he should be but it works um, I do make a lot of mistakes like that when I'm painting I'm very messy very haphazard and that's because as I said I'm trying to get those deliberate sort of bleeds and blooms in the paintwork so I don't want to be too precious about it um, when I do make mistakes like that I just try and embrace them um, you can try and fight them but it'll end up looking weird Instead, I would just let them do what they want to do, let the paint go where it wants to go. It will give your painting much more character in the end. Uh, let's go a bit darker over here. That's looking a bit yellow. So I'm just trying to tone that down with something that's got a bit more of a blue mixed in with it. Try and balance it out. And you can see that there's areas where um, the paint is gathering as the paper buckles. I did say the paper won't buckle. It does buckle while you're painting, but it sort of levels itself out as it dries. Um, and because it's glued down the sides, it will go back into its sort of correct position. So don't worry about that now. It does mean though that the, the water and the paint is gathering. And if I tilt it like this, you can see it moving around. But again, I'm just going to let it do that. Um, let's just splodge some of the colours on here and see. Uh, where else? It's looking a bit pale. So, on any dog, there tends to be areas that are 
um, I was going to say darker, but actually sometimes they can be lighter, but contrasting areas, shall we say, and that's around the eyebrows. And around this area here, sort of the edge of the cheek, and that's partly because it, there's a shadow there from the, the form of his face and the fact that his ears hanging down. And there'd be shadow coming down here too from his ear. But a lot of this is actually just about balancing the painting. So this area over here was looking a bit pale. So I stuck some more paint in there. I don't like what's going on up here. Not a lot I can do about that right now. So I'm just gonna leave it. So just dropping some water on here just to try and Get the paint to do some interesting things. Okay, the ear. There's a big lump of water here that I just need to spread around. And we'll use it to cover the ear, which is still dry. Just gone over the line there. When I'm painting pictures for prints or cards or things like that, I'm much less careful about going over the lines because they always get edited afterwards in Photoshop. When I work on a pet portrait, I'm giving the finished painting to a client, so I have to take much more care over things like going over the lines and so on because they can't be edited out in Photoshop. Okay, his ear is much darker. I'm leaving this inside bit because I want to make it a little bit pinky I think or a, a different color anyway so I'm going to come back to that before I'd finished um, so we've jumped ahead I've put a bit more color on the ears to darken them up a bit and I've left the paint to dry now I'm just going to add in some more details using a finer brush so give them a nice dark eye and although these are more detailed I am kind of using the same approach of just dropping in the paint, letting it go where it wants. So although it's a small area of the nose, taking the same approach that I did with the dog, just wetting that area first with a very pale wash, and then I will add in or drop in some other colors and let them just settle and find their own way. And I think it's important with the nose to not have one flat area of colour. It's, it's got to have those darker and lighter bits because it's shiny. Hopefully, if it's a healthy dog, it's got a shiny nose. So the light's going to be hitting it and leaving areas of it quite light. I might just drop in a bit of water there. It's really red. It clashes with his ear so badly. <laughs> um, never mind. If this was a portrait that I was doing for a client, I would not be happy with it right now. I would probably be starting, well, I would be starting again, let's be honest. Um, but it's just for me, it was just to see how I felt about drawing, working on these kind of portraits again, just for practice, so it doesn't matter. What I'm doing now is using really watery, um, thin paint and I'm using it in a, what's called a glaze. So that's where you've got a layer of paint already dried in one color and then you're going over it, usually in a different color, in, in thin washes or thin layers with lots of water on um, to create these sort of areas of different color. I didn't explain that very well. Um, but yeah, the glazing is when you layer up the thin watercolor. Now, with some of these details that I'm putting on now. Um, some of them, yes, I, I let bleed together like this, like I did with the original base layer, but some of them I'm being a little bit more precise, um, just creating detail with the watercolours now, rather than just splodgy areas of colour. So I'm following the direction that the hair would move in, and just putting in some suggestions of hair. We don't want to go mad and like put hair all over the dog and try and capture every hair that's on his head, but just create suggestions of the direction of the hair, the length of the hair, that kind of thing. He's looking less and less like 
a Labrador and more and more like something else that I don't know what. Okay, I'm just going to try and fix, fix that mess I made by just putting some water on and then lifting it off. It's not going to come off completely but it's looking better. That'll be all right. Okay, I need to wait for this to dry again and then just add one final um, layer of paint just to really pick out the details in the nose and the mouth um, and darken some bits up. Okay, the paints have gone, the paint is dry and what I'm going to do now is go back to the fine liners that I was using at the beginning of the process and pick out the, the line work in the fur and so on. This one is a micron pen, it's a 0.5, so it's a bit fatter, or quite a bit fatter. Um, but also I think, and I might be imagining it, but to my eye, the micron gives a sort of blacker, more intense black than the Stedler pen. Might be imagining it, but it it's a good pen to use for the pupil of the eye, where it's really intense, but also it's a sort of larger area that would take too long to fill with that finer pen. Okay. So fill that out, remembering to leave a white spot where the light is hitting it. And now I'm going to ignore that pen and go back to the very fine one that I was using at the beginning. Picking out the detail in the eye is especially important because when you look at a picture of a face, whether that's a, a person's face or a dog or any other animal, you automatically look at the eyes first. Um, it's just what we're programmed to do. So it really is important to make the eyes pop, make them look right. So I'm not going to go over every line that I drew earlier. Um, I like the fact that some of them uh, have become faded because they've got paint over the top of them. But what I want to do is just pick out some to enhance the overall image. Especially in these areas where, like I said earlier, you've got hairs kind of poking over the edge of the dog, no paint below them. It's those kind of details that really add to the picture. And then there'll be some areas where there's no pen at all. Okay, I've finished with the pens and now I'm moving on to one last stage which I like to add and that's using pencil just to pick out areas of shadow to give it a sort of more of a three-dimensionality I suppose. Um, sometimes I use graphite but today I'm going to use these oil-based pencils. They come in different levels um, so from hard to soft or extra soft. I've got a medium and a soft. The soft comes out a little darker. Just, just the same as when you use um, standard graphite pencils. And all I'm really doing is picking out areas where I think there would be a little bit of shadow that I want to show. Um, like I said, to try and sort of bring some three-dimensionality to the form, or areas that perhaps should have been darker when I was painting and I didn't quite get them dark enough, so maybe around the lips here. I'm pressing quite lightly with this. I want it to be sort of quite a subtle effect, I suppose. But I think it just adds, it just adds something to the finished picture. I could of course have done this with pen uh, paints when I was using the watercolours but I think using the pencil just allows me to be a bit more precise um, and just really think about where those marks are going and how they affect the overall image. It also allows you to sort of soften any areas where maybe you went a bit heavy handed with the pen marks um, you don't quite like the way the lines are looking, you can sort of almost blend them out. 
using this. I'm not entirely happy with that, but I think I think we'll leave it. Otherwise, I'm just going to keep I'm just going to color the whole thing gray if I'm not careful. Okay, and there's one last stage to this picture, and that's the background. You can hopefully see, it might not pick up on the camera, but I've already drawn in the geometric pattern that's going to go on the background, just using a pencil and a ruler. I'm going to use a graphite pencil, and it's an H. I use H or 2H usually when I do this, because they're that little bit lighter. Anything softer than that would be too dark. Now, obviously, using paints would make it much quicker, and sometimes I do use paints. But I just, I really like this part of the process. I think it, this is where I find the calm after the chaos of the painting, where I just lob the water on and all the colours. This is just the sort of slow, methodical, repetitive pencil action that takes forever. Um, and it just allows me to relax, let my mind wander, think about other things. This part of the portrait process is obviously going to take quite a long time for me to finish, so I'm going to stop the video and I will come back to you when this is all filled in. Okay, he's finished. Um, very much not the best picture I've ever made by any means. Um, there's a lot wrong with it, but I, I enjoyed doing it. I enjoyed working on a pet portrait for the first time in a long time. In the 10 years that I've been working as an illustrator, I've made hundreds, probably thousands of animals out of watercolour using that same messy wet on wet technique that I used with this dog. But for some reason today, I just, just didn't enjoy it as much. The thing that I actually really enjoyed was working in the sort of the glazes with the thinner paintbrush, just working with that really thin watercolour, layering it up, um, getting in details with the fine brush and I'm thinking that next time I sit down to paint I might make a pet portrait in that way using watercolour quite differently than I'm used to um, it'll be an experiment but we'll see how it goes um, thank you for watching